and welcome. You are watching or listening to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Uh, I am your oft co-host, Andrew Adams, but today I'm not joined by regular host, Jeremy Lesniak. I'm joined by our great friend of the show, Craig Wareham. Craig, how are you doing today? I'm awesome. Thanks for having me. No, this is I feel great. like I'm, I'm a... S- I'm a semi-regular guest appearance. Yeah, you you're up there in terms of having been on the show the most number of times outside of Jeremy and I. I have to be careful though. Victor's catching up to me. He is definitely is catching up to you. Um, so everybody listening and watching, thanks for being here. We appreciate it. Uh, I want to make sure to let you know that you can head on over to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com and find out all the information that you might want about this episode and others. And if you hear a dog running around in the background, that's because we have a dog running around in the background. Um, so Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, you'll find everything about this episode and every other episode. You'll find transcripts. You may find extra photos of our guests and whatnot. Um, and whistlekick.com is where you can go to find everything else that we do, anything that we sell, whether it's shirts like the one I'm wearing now, although you can't wear this, you can't buy this one. This is free training day, 2022. I have two of those. Yeah. Um, or you could buy a training program or, uh, purchase any of the many books that we have published as well. Um, and find out information on all the events that we do. Um, Or you could think about applying for Whistlekick Alliance and being a part of uh, that. So head on over to whistlekick.com to find all that stuff. Uh, And the other thing you can do to help us out is join our Patreon, uh, P-A-T-R-E-O-N slash Whistlekick, uh, for as little as $2 a month. $2, less than a cup of coffee, you can help out the show by making sure that it continues to get made. Um, And the last thing you can do to help us out, tell a friend. Listen to this episode, enjoy it, and tell a friend about it. So, Craig, we are here to talk about developing a leadership team. And you brought this this topic to me, and so this is something I know that you're passionate about. What does that mean? Well, I mean, we've done work. We've talked about it a bunch on the show about Matic and the, you know, the martial arts teacher training certification and stuff. And one of the cool things about that program is it's given me the opportunity to talk to so many school owners and kind of hear, hear their pain points, right? Like what is a struggle that that's a school owner may have or a, an instructor may have? And um, almost always the answer is I wish I had more help. I wish I had more people. I wish, you know, it's really hard to do the one person show kind of thing answer the phones, teach the class, talk to the parent, deal with the crying kid. And at the same time, don't forget to blink and breathe. Right. Like, so, um, you know, you have a lot of experience in teaching and developing teachers. I mean, you, you're around new teachers all the time. And, And so am I. So I thought maybe it'd be a cool thing. Maybe there'd be something in there for people, you know, something to think about, something to take away. And, I think my first tip, my first advice um, that I often give is it's never too early to start looking. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, The, you know, I've been thinking about this because we, you and I talked about recording this episode a week or so ago. And so I've been thinking, you know, about it. Um, You know, when Jeremy and I, a little peek behind the curtains, when Jeremy and I record stuff, often it's uh, we sit down and say, all right, what are we going to record about today? And then we, talk about it we just do it right then and there so we don't often get a chance to noodle on the topic a whole lot sometimes you do but not a lot and so i've had a week to think about this and the thing that i kept coming back to is i can't think of another hobby or lifestyle thing that people do where not always but often once a person hits a certain time in their training or whatever. Like let's, let's pick a sport, a basketball. So a kid starts playing basketball. Uh, they get their, they shoot, they make their thousandth point. They've made 1000 points. Awesome. Now you're a coach. Right. Now you have to coach people because you're obviously really good. I mean, you've, you've made a thousand baskets, you know, or you've done a thousand points. Like you clearly must be ready to be a coach, but, there are so many schools that I know of that 
boom, here's your black belt test. Here's your black belt. Okay, now you're going to help teach class now. That doesn't happen in any other sport or lifestyle that I can think of. And I think that is very, very bizarre. I think uh, it's true, right? Like, I, I, I can't think of another thing either where that happens, where all of a sudden it's like, oh, now you're doing this. Um, and you're teaching because you've hit X proficiency. Um, and, and it's one of my philosophies has, has always been, right? Just because you're a black belt doesn't mean that you're a teacher. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different skill set. Um, yes. And... <clears throat> And so for me, as I look at teams and, you know, in my schools, when I'm trying to identify people who I think could, could step into a leadership role, um, the belt around their waist is the last, last thing I look at. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you can't teach a passion for something. It's, it's, it becomes, it's them. They have to foster that on their own. And it, I think we both can agree without teaching or without passion, it's really hard to teach or lead in a way that makes people want to follow you. Yep. Yep. No, that's very, very true. Yeah. You know, and but so, I was going to go say, ahead. so your, your first point of it's never too early to start looking for a person that you can help mentor into becoming a leader in your organization. And let's face it, we're talking martial arts school, but it could be in anything really, you know? Right. Um, it's never too early to start that process. Right. And never count people out. You'd be surprised, I think, at the people who maybe they want to be a part of it in some way and they don't know how to approach and ask or they don't know how to, um, they don't know where they would fit. Because mm -hmm. oftentimes, and there's been, I think, countless episodes at this point on, st students inherently at first put instructors on a pedestal, right? Unfortunately. We, it's just what happens. And, and I think that that's a, that's a human trait is it's like, well, I want to be like that person. Mm -hmm. And then you get into the training for a while. And if you have an instructor who's really fostering you along the way, you recognize that they're just on their, the instructors on their own journey too. Right. Um, but sometimes it's such a big wide range that people don't recognize where they could fit in. Yeah. Right. Um, I remember very vividly my first day, helping out i was a green belt at my school i had been training for a couple of years um at, at my school green belts like a, a middle of the road level like you know mm -hmm. you're about halfway to your black belt and um i just showed up early to class one day i had probably one of the worst class attendances at the time like i didn't I, <laughs> I was a once a week maybe yeah. right um i was kind of starting to check out because i had reached an age where i discovered that um, girls existed and that they weren't always in the karate school. Yep. Right. And, and so I started to kind of check out from martial arts, but I showed up early cause my mom had to drop me off early. I got there and my instructor at the time said, Hey, you're here early. Um, why don't you go help the instructor on the floor? Like go out and just see if he needs a hand. So I said, Oh, okay. So I bowed on the mat. I walked out. Um, and then after that, I was hooked, right? But mm -hmm. literally all they had me do the first day was learn every kid's name. That was it. Like, I didn't teach. I didn't coach. I didn't fix anything. I didn't compliment them. It was literally just try to remember their names. Yeah. And then after yeah. that, I, I, was, I wanted to help every class I could. But I think the most important part of that story is I wasn't frequently attending at the time. Yeah. I wasn't what you'd call passionate about martial arts. Mm -hmm. And... I was probably not who you'd identify as that's the person that should teach someday. That's, that's a good observation that it's, you know, sometimes that passion is there dormant and you don't know it's even there. Right. Until someone gives you the opportunity to show it. Right. 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 And I think that that's one of the most important things is never assume that people want to teach but also don't assume that they don't want to teach. You're not going to know until you provide an opportunity. Yeah, um, I, I actually know of a black belt uh, who tested with me uh, and got their black belt. And they were kind of nervous about getting their black belt. And it had nothing to do with the test itself. Like they were ready. It was that 
they knew that once they get their black belt, they're going to be expected to be, quote, in charge during class at times. And this is a person who in every aspect of their life was, you know, in charge of everything. And they came to, to karate and enjoyed not being in charge, right? Right. And all of a sudden, they're like, oh, no, like, I'm going to be testing for my Shodan and I'm going to be expected to be in charge again. And I, this is my release from that. This is where I get to not be in charge. So not everybody is going to want to be a leader or have any sort of leadership position in your school, whether it's officially teaching or helping lead stuff. Right. Right. And there's no problem with, you know, starting out just by saying, Hey, you know what, let's take this orange belt and they're going to work with a white belt today. Mm Mm-hmm. And then it preframe it with the orange belt. Say, hey, look, you know what? You're the higher belt today. I'm not looking for you to be the boss. I'm looking for you to be a leader. Leaders show. They don't tell. And I'm yep. looking for I'm, – and then what I'll do is throughout the class, I've got one eye on that group. But I'm specifically watching how the orange belt interacts with the white belt. Uh, I think that's a great point, Greg. And, you know, something Jeremy and I have talked about all the time that, you know, you don't have to be – a black belt to be a teacher, to be teaching or helping lead or presenting stuff in your school or in your class. Uh, if you know something that a someone below you doesn't know, you can, there's, if you can pass on that knowledge, that's a good thing. It doesn't right. matter what rank you are. Right. So I think naturally the next step, because I think, I feel like we hit the first part, right? Like I yep. open it up and identify it everywhere. But I think the second part in developing a team is whoever's going to lead the team, whoever's building this thing has to have a clear understanding and idea of what they want people to do. Right? Like, the, cause yep. the next step of this, right? If, if, you know, you're opening Andrew's karate school, right? LLC trademark <laughs> okay if you if you're opening that and then you go hey i need craig mark victor you guys are going to be teaching with me and you give us no direction exactly there has then to we're be just going to stand there yeah there, there there has to be open clear communication i talked i jeremy and i have talked about this at length on episodes that the 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 instruction and direction has to come from the top down those people that you are expecting to lead your team you know be on your leadership team they have to be on the same page as you if you don't give them a book at all they're going to start writing their own book right. and right. if they start writing their own book it might not be the book you want them to be writing So you have to hand them a book. And I'm talking a metaphysical book, everybody. I'm not talking about you have to write a book. But you have to get them on the same page and expect them to give them the expectations that you have of them for sure. And have it clearly defined. You know, we all have no problem creating a curriculum for I want you to know X, Y, and Z for this color belt. Yep. Yep. Well, for you to get your teaching levels with me anyway, um, at my school, the way it works is there's five levels of teacher. There's level one, the level one person's high fiving kids and helping tie their belt. That's it. That's all you're doing. You're not coaching. Maybe you're getting us equipment. The level two people, they're coaching small groups only. They're, they're allowed to work up to three people up by themselves. Then the third level, now they're working in the full group. They've, they, you know, But there's curriculum. There's stuff they have to follow and meet every step of the way. And it goes up to level five. But what what happens is when you have it structured that way, there's a natural progression. Well, now the level three instructors can delegate to level two and level one. And it becomes a machine where Mm -hmm. you don't have to communicate with each other because everyone knows their job. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Here's the reality for people listening. If you run a martial arts school, you need, and, and I, 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 I'm hoping Jeremy would be okay with me saying this. We don't, we on the show don't often tell people things they really need to do or need not to do, but I think I would, I think Jeremy would, would agree with me on this one. If you run a school, you need someone that can take a class if you're not there. Because the only other option is you close your school for the day. Like, because let's face it, everybody gets sick. 
even if you're someone who doesn't go on vacation and doesn't leave, you're totally devoted to your school, which I applaud. That's awesome. That's great. But people get sick and you're not expected to go in and teach if you're, you know, deathly sick or you're ill or whatever. Um, And so your two options are you have someone teach a class for you. Well, this is what we're talking about right now, essentially. You know, whether your leadership team is one person because maybe you're a really small school or your leadership team is seven, eight, nine, ten people, you have to have someone that can take over teaching classes if you can't be there. Absolutely. You know, what if, you know, you hurt your leg, right, or something like that and you're unable to be there? There needs to be something in place for that. And the worst time to put that in place is when you're going through whatever it is you're going through where you need someone. Exactly. Um, you know, so and, they should develop a leadership team. There you go. There <laughs> you go. And and don't forget that you're on the team too, right? Like oh, that's yeah. that's one of the most important aspects is people go, oh, this team, and now I've got to manage another team. Well, no, you're on this team. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, the team's there to help you. And, yeah. you know, I say all the time, martial arts is one generation away from extinction always it's always one generation away all all it takes is all of us right now who are the people who are teaching and running schools to do a bad job no one wants to do this anymore martial arts goes away yep that's and so through developing this team you're also potentially identifying people who may want to run a school someday yeah you know, who wants to stay involved and give back into something that, that we believe in. I'm assuming if you're listening or watching, um, you're pretty passionate about martial arts in one facet or another, and you want to see it continue on. Mm -hmm. And and so there's, there's all sorts of reasons to do it. Um, conversely, one reason not to do it is simply, you might not have a lot of time. Sure. Yep. Right. it might, it, and here's the reality, teaching, and, and this is some people listening might get their hackles raised at this, teaching is not something that people inherently know how to do. Right. It's not. It is a skill that is learned. That's why when you go to high school or you go to middle school or elementary school, the people teaching there, they're not dragging off the street, hey, you want to come teach? No. They go to school. They go to college. They get a degree on how to teach. I'm sorry, martial arts is not any different. It's different in the sense of you don't go to school and get a formal education and get a degree, but it is still a skill that must be learned and people are not just automatically good teachers. And so there are some people that are phenomenal at what they do. And and I'm thinking I come from the drumming world. I know some incredible drummers. Some of, in fact, I'm thinking of a particular person that's one of, was one of the best drummers in the world. I went to a seminar that they did and it was not very good. They were not a good teacher, but they were a phenomenal doer. And there are definitely, and I bet everybody listening can think of people that they know that are phenomenal at martial arts, but are not great at teaching. And so if you are running a school You can't just expect this leadership team to just materialize it, materialize and be there. You have to develop it. And that's what this, this kind of what we're talking about, you know? So how do we get there? Yeah. You know, we've already said you can start early, right? Don't discount anybody. You know, there may be people you don't think would be good at it, but don't just count them out because of that. You never know. Where do we, where do we go next? Once you start to identify people and then you have your set structure and boundary, right? Like, cause that's the next step is what are they going to be responsible for? What are they going to do? What is your vision? You know, I, I've talked to a handful of instructors who run schools who I need all these people and they bring in all these people and then the instructor still does all the work because they don't know what they want the people to do or they don't trust that the job's going to get done the way they want. Well, you've got to have a little leap of faith. So honestly, watching for who you'd put in the team is a precursor. That's already, that already should be happening every class. Yeah. But, but really the first step is defining and creating a vision. What do you want them to do? 
What do you want them to get out of this? Some schools, their leadership team is responsible for making sure the facility is clean and everything's dusted and everything's organized. Some people, their leadership team is responsible for writing out postcards and making phone calls to students and checking in. You know, mm-hmm. you just have to figure out where do I need the most assistance? And then from there, you develop it and then you start to reach out and, and recognize people for it. Um, and say, I think that this would be a good fit for you. And I'd like, to, I'd like to try it. I'd like to teach you how to do this leadership thing, whatever this may be. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and there, there are two schools of thought. So maybe sometime, Andrew, <laughs> uh, on this, whether or not you, you as a school owner charge for it or don't charge for it, that's not the scope today. That, that could be mm-hmm. a different, a whole different thing. Um, yeah. But these, it's important to just get the ball rolling first, define what the victory looks like, then define the team you need to make that victory happen. Because mm-hmm. if you need people to write postcards, get on the phone to people to help you keep people engaged, well, you're probably not looking at the one who does the prettiest flying sidekick. Maybe you're looking at the one who is the most personable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? It, different skill sets for different jobs. <laughs> Yep. And then I think something that can't be discounted is if you are going to have a leadership team, whether, again, whether that team is one person or whether that team is five people, right? I think there needs to be regular and regular doesn't mean every day. Regular doesn't mean once every five years. It's up to you to determine, but regular private get togethers with that, whether that team is one person or five, to discuss everything, how they're doing, how they might want to discuss with you, how you're doing as the person running the team. You know, there may be things that they, that concerns they have that they want to bring to you. Um, And, you know, it it would, I'm not saying a private training where, all right, we're all going to come and work out and sweat. Although that, that could be a part of it, but I think they, whoever that team is needs regular feedback from, you uh again not every day but not every five years either like on a somewhat regular basis i've i've always found success at once a month yeah uh what we do is we do uh once a month two hours um the first hour is the physical let's sweat let's train let's do some stuff and one of the things to just to give people ideas one of the things that i do in that is i'll ask the teachers i'll say hey what are where where are you feeling least confident in the curriculum to teach? And that's what we'll do. Smart. And so, you know, I, I identify already right off the bat, Hey, where, where's the pain point? And I'll tell you the flip note. I already know what it is because I pay attention at the belt testing and I make notes, right? Yeah. Oh, we fell short here. Okay. Well, we fell short here. A, cause we didn't cover it enough or B because whoever was teaching it at the time wasn't feeling ownership enough confident enough yeah right yeah and so the first hour is that the second hour is the okay let's do this drill let's do this let's Mm -hmm. role play talking to a parent right because that's that's important people don't inherently know how to talk to somebody either in a way that you would so role playing scripts and things like that saying hey look you know what do what's the procedure if somebody comes in and wants to take a class for the first time well, your instructor, yeah. your, your leadership team should know. Even if their only job is go get the go get the owner or whatever, they yeah. need to know. Yeah, yeah, I would agree, and, and I think I think you probably agree. Most school owners that are listening to this, most of their leadership team, the majority is going to be people to teach class. Sure, there are other for sure. We've already brought up a lot of other things that this leadership team can can be responsible for if you so choose talking to people, getting new students on onboarding new students, right? You could farm that out to the leadership team as well and other things. But, but I think the bulk of the leadership team duties that people will want is for teaching. Mm -hmm. And we've already talked about how to, you know, that being a teacher is not a a skill you just have inherently. You have to learn that. Um, And so I think you're getting together once a month, you yourself get together once a month, what whatever that is for your school, for the audience listening, I think talking about and doing things 
on how to be a better teacher is what if, if you're looking for your leadership team to be better teachers, you need to teach them how to be better teachers. Yeah, I agree. And I recommend, um, I try to do this frequently uh, myself, is I bring in outside instructors whom I think are awesome, mm-hmm. um, I, that I have a good relationship with. Andrew, you've worked with my leadership team before, right? Yep. Um, you know, and and I really try hard to bring in that outside perspective and only open it to the leadership team, right? Because one of the things is, hey, you know what? You're giving me extra time and you're really helping me. I'm going to do this for you. Yeah. But also, one of the things I always say is pay really, really close attention to how Andrew teaches or, how, you know, whatever it is, whoever the instructor is, pay really close attention to the words they use and how they move their body. And and I give them cues. And it's usually things that I've noticed when taking a class with them. You know, when I've, you know, if I've been in your seminars at free training days and stuff. And, and so I know there are things that you have that you could pass along mm-hmm. without needing to even talk about it per se. But always bringing in outside influence, just like how many parents have come to you when you're teaching and said, oh, can you please talk to Susie? You know, she's not cleaning her room and you go out say the exact same thing the parents are saying and then all of a sudden the room's clean it's the same exact thing and um i actually i friend of the show mark warner i talked to him about this episode on wednesday Mm -hmm. and and mark um is a big proponent of bringing in outside people right yeah i mean his his entire teaching team and development leader or developing his leadership team revolved around coming to the maddox sessions and Mm -hmm he, you know, it formed a a thing for him where now he's got that set hierarchy. He's already two layers deep into his levels. And, you know, he's already identifying a third level of people, you know, that that are really helpful. Yep. And I think, you know, I want to go back just really quick, because there may be people listening or watching that don't know they hear you say, he's done Matic. What, what the heck is Matic? So Matic is uh, martial art teacher training and certification. It is a program designed to help people learn how to be better teachers and something that you and Jeremy put together. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So um, the martial art teacher training and certification, also called Matic, just because it's shorter and easier. Um, so I know there's a level one that, that people can take, uh, various times throughout the year, different places, uh, around mostly the Northeast, cause that's where you guys are. But I think if someone wanted to host a Matic event in Florida, you guys could certainly talk about that. Yeah. Um, we'll go. But I know there, there's level one. I know there's level two. Uh, and I know you guys are working on rolling out level three eventually, but uh, I, I wanted to at least touch on that because I think it's it's an incredibly good program that does exactly what we're talking about. It, it It is a program designed to teach people how to be teachers. It's not teaching them, this is how you teach a punch. This It's teaching them, this is how you teach, period. Um, and so I, I wanted to, you know, you, you mentioned Matic and I wanted to make sure to put that in there that. So people understood what that was. Sure, sure. Uh, Sometimes I get lost in my own world. So I appreciate that about you. (laughs) It's all good. No, I think you're right, though. Um, Bringing in outside people is a huge way to bring something to your students, obviously, that they don't normally get. But in terms of everybody teaches differently. You know, right. even and the reality is even someone I'm developing to be a teacher in my school, they're still going to teach differently than I do. Right. You know, we might have the same type of teaching style, but even still, it's still going to be a little bit different. Yeah. So um, karate and special schools, I, I manage. There's two of them. And my original instructor, John English, and I run them together and we always say he and I have the same exact standard and two totally different roadways to get there. He's a little bit more old school, you know, and and I'm not. And so it's the same standard. You have to do the same thing. You have to, you know, your material has to look great. You have to be a kind and generous person, but 
the way we get there might look different. But and that's that's what you want. You want a team of individuals that are all working together towards the same goal. And so what that means is you all have to be unified in your goal, but flexible enough to use your strength to enhance it. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been talking now for about a half an hour and most of what we've been talking about are for school owners. Let's quickly take a few minutes now to talk about, to talk to the, our audience that do not own a school, but they maybe want to be involved more in their school and, and help their school out and be a leader in their school. Um, For me, my thought is you have to talk to your, instructor talk to the person running the school and say this is a desire that i would like to have is there something i can do to help and would you uh, i mean obviously i'm seeing you nod your head i know you agree yeah. but would, yeah, do you have yeah. anything to add yeah i think well i think it's a t- it's a two-part process talk to the instructor let them know this is something i want but also just kind of just do it right do like it. there's there's no reason to not be a leader um you know and just try not to be heavy-handed right like that one of the mo- one of the biggest hurdles I've seen in all the time I've been doing le- instructor development is somebody decides to be a leader and they interpret that as being the louder one or the more knowledgeable one, quote unquote. Mm. And and I, I would encourage you to recognize leadership is not always being the most knowledgeable or not always being the loudest person, but it's recognizing that you're there for the betterment of others, and they recognize that too. And you know. Uh, say it a lot um a leader is only a leader if they have followers otherwise it's just a person taking a walk right yeah Yeah. so uh if you are interested in becoming a leader or an instructor first you have to get over the initial speed bump talk to the instructor and then second just kind of start doing it when you're working with a partner just lead just push them a little bit let them push you a little bit give and take Help out when, even when it's not being asked. Yeah. And we did an episode, I think, right, Andrew? Mm-hmm. I'm being yeah. a helpful yeah. student. So check that Absolutely. out too. That'll probably help. Yeah. What have we missed, Craig? I, don't, I mean, you know me, I could talk about this all day. So, <laughs> so uh, my mind keeps going, but I think that that's a good introduction, a good initial run into starting a, a leadership team. And in, in the meantime, this is, this is an exciting thing, Andrew. I don't think you even know about this yet. Ooh. If you ha- have questions about leadership team or you want to talk more, pick my brain, you can email me, Craig, at whistlekick.com. Ooh, Craig's, got, Craig's moving up in the world. Got his own whistlekick email. I've got it. I've had it for a while. I just never talk about it. So you can email me, Craig, at whistlekick.com. I'd love to talk to you and help you get the ball rolling a little bit. Awesome. And for the audience listening or watching, if you have a leadership team, how did you develop it? How did it come about? Um, Are there specific things that you make sure to do with your leadership team that you think others would get use out of and would benefit from hearing about? Please let us know. Go on our Facebook uh, group uh, page to page now, not a group. Anyway, look up martial arts radio, uh, join that. uh, And, you know, Tell everybody, comment on the episode when I post in there uh, about what you do, because we'd love to hear from you. Um, we already know, you already know you can reach Craig at Craig at Whistlekick.com. I'm Andrew at Whistlekick.com. Feel free to check out Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio for this episode, for the transcript and everything else. Uh, whistlekick.com to make any purchase. I forgot to mention at the beginning, if you do make a purchase, you can use the code PODCAST15, save yourself 15% off almost anything in the store not everything we don't we don't give discounts for some of our paid events but most everything you'll find a discount on um and i think that's it so until next time train hard smile and have a great day